Hi, this is Brad SharpensBest.com out here in the woods down by Denver, Colorado. And as you probably know, I live in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And uh, we do product reviews, and so we just go uh, Harbor Freight this time. And I picked up a machete. It's 10 bucks, a little under $10, I think. And uh, it's a Gordon name uh, machete. This one's kind of neat because the back is made into a saw. So let's see if they actually have a saw or if it's kind of like a saw. All right, so just kind of tear it apart here. Undo that. I take it out of that fancy sheath. Okay. And we got to unvelcro it like that. Take it apart. We got some plastic on there. Looks like it's got a little oil and stuff. So the plastic kind of stuck to it. That's good. A little oil doesn't hurt matters any. As far as, uh, oh, I don't know, the cutting edge. I'm going to call the cutting edge a total of about 20 inches uh, along here and then around. I see that it's uh, probably a sixteenth of an inch thick. It starts back here about a half to five sixteenths or nine sixteenths of an inch. Ground, hollow ground, and then they put the secondary bevel on it. Uh, you know, just out of the box. Oh, that isn't. Uh, that's always normal though because when they go to grind these like that, they, they don't lay it up like this. They put it down and they actually took the edge right off of the point of that thing. Um, kind of expected. It does have a saw on the back. It looks like a very aggressive saw. Uh, it's deep. Um, it's, a, it's a good cross cut saw, probably. It's not a rip because it's too uh, wide, thick between the uh, teeth there. So first we're going to do is what we always do. Uh, we're going to check and see if it'll slice paper. And I'm going to kind of ease into it. There. That's really not too bad, but it's seriously tearing the paper by, okay, and, and you have to kind of work at it. Now I'm going to sharpen it and we'll see. So, just like that, right up, that's where it really stops, okay. So, let's sharpen it first. I take my handy little uh, uh, sharpener. This is one I've been using. Actually, this is one I've been using for a long time. It's one of my demos from the, from the shows. And if you look at it kind of up close, you're going to see that it's marked black. That's for demo. It's got the plastic kind of chewed up. And I'm going to use that same old one, not a new one. I don't use a new one every time uh, for my benefit because then it's going to cut the blade better. I don't do that. I don't play those silly little games. I use the sharpeners that I use all the time. Uh, you know, just to kind of prove, yeah, longevity, they work, work, work. Okay. And this one is one, one of my ones that has Brad Buckner sharpen, or excuse me, Brad Buckner and my phone number on it. That way you can find me. All right. So you lay it down like, oh, that's kind of nice. It actually kind of sticks to the wood. All right. So we're just going to go along like this, moving towards the tip in about four inch segments, just like that. I'm pressing a little harder. Notice that I'm not, I'm not reefing on it like this. I am putting a little pressure on it. What a wonderful tool to go around the radius with. You try that with a sharpening stone, a steel, landscape, crock stick, diamond impregnated tools. Any of those type of tools have fun on the radius. Okay, then we just come right back up here. We're gonna go right on out again. I see the glistening in the sun of the little medical metal particles coming off. And then get right down here and kind of lay on it a little bit. I get right down here with you, just like that. And I'm gonna turn it over and go along this way. I pick it up, set it down in the back, slide it forwards. Pick it up, set it down in the back, slide it forwards. Pick it up, set it down in the back, slide it forwards. All right, now you gotta be careful with this. I've never had to deal with the back of a knife being a saw. You do not wanna get your fingers in there. I'll guarantee you, you're gonna be bleeding. You won't like it. So just like this, move right on out. The glare off of that blade is really bright because we have a beautiful sunny day here in the Denver area. Just like that, work right on around. Now there's no sawtooth on there, so it'll slide easier when I want to work this way. Go right on around like this. I'm not taking very long on this. All right, now let's just lighten the pressure. Go right on down through there, gentle. It's going to take quite a bit to actually put an edge up there because they didn't put an edge up there to speak of at all. And we just drag it along. Okay, there's two corners on there. One right there, one right there. 90 degree corners. That's what I'm touching to the blade like this. Match the bevel of the grind. Turn it approximately 45 degrees. 
and begin to slide it. You can draw it back to you or out. I'm at the point now to where I need to polish the blade a little bit. In other words, I just need to take that little tiny wire edge off there. If I'm actually going to hack on stuff, I don't care about the wire edge. It makes no difference whatsoever. If I'm going to attempt to slice paper, if I don't take that little burr, that little wire edge off there, that little micro burr that I created while I was sharpening, I'll never cut that paper right. So let's see how my machete does now. That is quieter. You don't have to saw at it quite as much. And then right out to the tip is a lot better than it was. It would probably take somewhere in the neighborhood of six or seven minutes to really fix that blade. Ah, that bites. That will not slide. So let's clean the blade off. See all the fingernail? That's actually quite sharp. So let's do some chopping and some sawing now. Okay? So I pick my sharpener up so I don't step on it and push it into the dirt or something. And uh, again, we're working on dry, uh, bone dry, dead old cottonwood. I mean hard. Okay? So I don't know. Let's chop on this one and saw on this one. Okay? So let's just go like this. Woo. That's two and a half inches in diameter. And that's pretty darn good. But see, you have a, a long sweet spot on there. What's the sweet spot? That's where it balances. If you hit out here, that's going to cause vibration back on you. If you hit back here, it's also going to cause vibration back on the handle. So you want to learn to hit wherever the weight of the knife is pretty much balanced. Okay, let's see if we if this is kind of floppy, but let's do it again. Well, that one broke, uh, but it is pretty sharp. Works pretty good. Doesn't take long to get through that thing. All right, let's saw. See how it works sawing. I'm gonna put my leg against it. I'll pull, I'll put a little more pressure on it as I pull to me. If I push away, put pressure on it, it'll push it away from my leg. So let's see how this works. And it's gonna pinch, it's already pinching. That wood is wet on the inside. So let's see how this is gonna work. have to break it because it's just too wet. What's really going on here is the kerf on the saw isn't quite enough. The kerf means the teeth are bent a little bit to make this wider than the rest of it. So they made it sharp but they didn't actually bend the teeth enough to make a kerf wider than the blade and it's binding up. But until it binds it actually saws pretty good. But I'm just going to say, when you go to the woods, take something besides this because you won't get through it very thick. This is a good chopper. Okay. Now let's see what we got for sharp steel. That isn't bad. This is Brad. Machete, 10 bucks, Harbor Freight, works pretty good. Catch you later, thanks.